Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm sharing 30 cards that I made with the Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kit for February of 2024 and it's called Pop Flowers. Now I shared an unboxing video about a week ago where I showed the contents of the kit plus some backgrounds that I made using the stencil. So I'll link that video above in case you missed it, but here's a quick look at what's included. I've basically just sped that up. But the stamp set is called Take Care and it's got some great all occasion sentiments. And the paper pad has some really fun patterns and a beautiful color palette, which is very similar to the February of 2024 color palette challenge colors that's part of the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group. I'll have a link to my group down in the description box below in case you'd like to check it out. But here is the color palette that we're using for the month of February of 2024. Now I've selected several inks from my stash that, that I think match these colors in the color palette for the kit and I'm going to first show you how to use the stencil. Now I showed me making these backgrounds in my unboxing video so I'll skip over a few of these but I tried out different tools to see what would give me the best results. I don't really use stencils a whole lot and I've got several different brushes and sponges but I'm using the Altenew Ultra Sticky Grid Mat to hold my stencil in place and I have several A2 size panels already cut. The first light blue color didn't really match the light blue from the color palette, but it's okay. I used the Pink and Main Mini Ergonomic Blending Brush for this one. So after coloring the flowers, I just shifted the stencil down and colored in the leaves with the lime green color, which I think matches pretty close. Next, I started with the leaves first, since I plan on using the same color for all of the leaves on all of my backgrounds. Again, I'm using the mini ergonomic blending brush for that. And then I just shifted it to do the flowers now. And this time I'm bringing in one of the uh, brushes from my stash. And I really love this vibrant blue. These flowers turned out really pretty. Now I did a pink background also, which I'm going to skip over, but next I used paper pouncers to color in the yellow flowers. Now this tool is designed with a large sponge so that you can just pounce the ink on top of the stencil. And because they're larger, this didn't really take very long to do. And um, I do know that these paper pouncers are available in the Pink and Main store, at least they were the last time I checked. But next I shifted the stencil again colored in my leaves and then I added the stencil back on top of the flowers and I'm going to add some solar paste. Now this is called Golden Hour and I'm going to add this using a sponge dauber. Now a little bit goes a long way but I just love the way that this solar paste adds some beautiful shine to these flowers. So now that I have several stenciled backgrounds, I'm going to move on to stamp out my sentiments. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I always stamp in bulk. So I started with stamping out these sentiments using my Misty Stamping Platform and some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And because my stamps are new, of course I had to stamp it a few times because they still have that stickiness from manufacturing on there. But I also stamped out um, some sentiments in the construction color, the orange color from Pink and Main. And then I stamped a few sheets of the lime green and also that darker blue color. So I have several sheets of each color. And then next I used the coordinating dies to cut them out. So after cutting out the first one, I used it as a template to align the next sheet behind it to make things go faster. I always do this every time I'm cutting out sentiments. I just use the first one as a template and then continue to cut until they're all done. And so now I have a bunch of sentiments that are ready to go. For the first few cards I'm going to show you, most of these are actually two for one cards, but I used the layered scallops A2 rectangle dies that you see up here in the corner. I used the smaller scallop, 
and also the stitched rectangle from that set. And then I also used the largest of the stitched rectangle one set of dies to cut out that bottom layer. Now for the yellow flower background, I'm also going to be using the yellow checkered pattern paper with that. And so for the scalloped rectangle, I've cut out two solid colors, yellow and green. And these two scallop layers go behind the floral piece that I cut out with the stitched rectangle die. And I'm using that on top of the checkered pattern. So I'm just gluing all of these down. And then for the sentiment, I added some foam tape to the back. And then to finish off this card, I just added some sticky pearls to all of the centers of all of the flowers that were showing. And of course, I kept all of my scraps because I will be using those as well. You know me, I don't like to have any scraps. So I went ahead and cut up what I could and set it aside because I will be showing you how I use those here in just a moment. I went ahead and took that floral rectangle piece and I layered it up onto some yellow cardstock. And then I took that small yellow checkered scrap and I glued that down and outlined it with two green quarter inch strips. And then I placed the layered yellow flower piece to the right. And again, just like I did on the last card, I added some sticky pearls to the centers of the flowers. And then, of course, I popped up the sentiment again with some foam tape. Now, it was at this point that I figured out how to cut my backgrounds down to get two for one cards. So I cut the stitched rectangle out of the middle of the light blue panel so that I could use the outline or the frame and the rectangle piece in the middle. So um, I glued down the frame and uh, glued down the uh, pattern paper along with those layered pieces, added some foam tape to the back of the sentiment just to basically help it stand out some more from that busy background. But you can see here that I have two cards out of the one background. So I have the floral frame with the checkered pattern in the middle and then for the other card I added a green checkered pattern paper as a strip behind the other light blue floral piece that I cut from the center of the background panel. So again I'm just adding some sticky pearls to give it some bling on all of the flowers. For this next one I basically did the same thing it's another two for one except this time I'm using the blue foil that came in the uh, crafty courtyard kit again I used the stitched rectangle dies to cut out two layers out of the background so I have the floral frame for one and then the floral rectangle panel in the center for the other and again I popped up my sentiments with foam tape I just added some sticky pearls to the centers of some of the flowers on this one but I just love these colors together so now I have a total of eight cards using these stenciled backgrounds Now I'll show you the two cards I made with the pop-up flowers die set. I've cut these out of white cardstock, and since there are several small pieces that need to come out, I'm rubbing my Sizzix die brush over it to help remove all of those tiny pieces. But as you can see, this doesn't cut out the butterfly or the wreath completely. It just removes some of the parts so that you can place something behind it and then pop up the flowers. So I'm gonna use this blue foil panel that came from the kit. Also, off camera, I used a scrap piece of paper behind the butterfly wing and I colored it with my black Copic marker. And I used my poker tool to lift up all of the cut pieces to give it some dimension. 
Now this is a unique die set because it doesn't completely cut out the images. So you'll have to use your imagination on what all you can do with this. I kept this one pretty simple, but after popping up all of the flowers that were left, I just added this to a card base. And then I added one of the black and white sentiments that says congratulations that I had stamped out earlier. And of course I added some foam tape to the back of that for dimension. And then to finish off this card, I just added um, some of those sticky pearls. And then I added some Stickles glitter glue to the butterfly wing. And my bottle is almost empty. So <laughs> you see me squeezing the life out of this thing. Um, and I couldn't get it to come out. But once it finally started coming out, I finished off this bottle. But I did add some, some shiny glitter to my butterfly wing. And I think this turned out really pretty. Now for the next card, I found a scrap piece of lime green shimmery paper that I created a while back using some shimmer spray. And I just cut it down to be the same size as the wreath to put behind this panel. Again, I popped up all of the flowers on the wreath using my little pokey tool. And then I glued this down on top of the, um, the green piece. And then I put that on top of the blue foil panel. I added the happy spring sentiment into the center, popped it up with some foam tape, and then I added some of those blue sticky pearls throughout the wreath. Now that I've shared the first 10 cards that I made with the stencil and the pop out flowers dies, I'll share the cards that I made with the pattern papers and my current quarterly card challenge number 13 sketches. Now, I've selected six sheets of pattern papers from the paper pad and I cut them according to the cutting templates from my PDF digital download that you see here. Now each quarter I offer a free printable that you can download from my Patreon page that will show you how to create 15 cards using six sheets of paper. All you have to do is sign in as a free member to download, but this printable contains 15 card sketches with measurements for all of the pieces and layers. So even if you don't want to make 15 cards, you can use the sketches by themselves since they have all of the measurements that you need. Now the cutting guides have numbers on each of the um, pieces that correspond to the 15 different card sketches and they are color coded so it makes it easy to see what goes where, but these cutting guides also have scissors to indicate where you make your first cut. And it also has arrows which show the direction that the piece goes on the sketch. And this is helpful if you have pattern paper with a directional pattern. But I went ahead and cut up all of the papers off camera and I cut my layers and I have them sorted into these numbered cellophane bags here. Recently, the Kendra's Card Challenges design team shared cards using Challenge 13 and Pink and Main products. And I showed how to create card number seven and turn it into a fun fold. So I won't show that process again, but I will link the video above if you'd like to see how I made it. But since this month's kit didn't come with any images, I'm bringing in the Butterfly Sketches stamp set to go along with the sentiments from that Take Care stamp set from the Crafty Courtyard kit. But I stamped these out using different colored inks, and then I cut them out with the coordinating dies. Here are the blue ones that I used for Sketch 7. And uh, here is the card, and it is a trifold. I will probably add something else behind this flap that opens from the right. And I also made another fun fold card using sketch 13. And so I'll show you how I did that really quick. So I have an A2 size panel that measures four and a quarter by five and a half and an orange layer that I embossed with the Pretty Butterflies embossing folder from Pink and Main. It's really hard to see that embossing on camera, but it's, it's really pretty. But I have a top folding strip, which will actually be the card that you open that I'm gluing on top of this orange panel. And it measures two and a quarter by 11 inches and I scored it at five and a half. And I also cut a one and a half inch by six inch strip of yellow cardstock for the arm piece. 
and I scored this at four inches and I put the small end behind the orange panel before gluing it onto that white panel and then I glued the white top folding card on top of the orange panel slightly to the left of the center and then I added a yellow layer and then I added the pattern paper piece on top and then I added the layers on top of the arm using the measurements on the sketch so those pieces were cut using those measurements and then for the circle part I'm using the layered scallops circle dies from Pink and Main and I already cut and layered this up using yellow and white cardstock for the scallop layers and then for the orange for the top circle layer I cut the Miss You out of the center of that white scallop layer. And since I'm adding this onto the arm and I don't want the letters that I cut out to show, I went ahead and cut out another white scallop circle to glue onto the back of the arm to help secure it. So now all I have to do is cut off what's hanging over the edge. And then to finish off the card, I just added a few sticky pearls around the sentiment. So this is a top folding card with a flap. I'm not really sure what kind of fold you call this, but. Um, I think this is really fun. So let me show you the first 10 cards again. Here's the two that I made with the Pop Flowers dies and that pretty blue foil cardstock that came in the kit. You can see all the dimension there. Gorgeous. And then for all of the uh, stenciled backgrounds, I have those two for one cards. So these are similar but this is the first one when I realized that um, I could really make better use of my cardstock. So um, this one I turned it a little bit differently. Even though the blue's not the same shade of blue from the kit, it still turned out pretty. And then here's the pink one. I just love this pink. I think this is probably my favorite color out of the out of the whole palette. Now I don't know about that. The, this blue one's also really pretty. <laughs> And this one has the foil accents on it. Okay, so now for the rest of the cards, rather than showing you the process of me making them all, I'm just going to show you the finished cards this time so that the video isn't too long. I've also been under the weather and it was really difficult for me to sit at my craft table for a long period of time. So I made a few cards here and there and it was just kind of, it was just difficult for me to record. So I'm... Um, been recovering from COVID, but here's the finished cards that I made using the Challenge 13 sketches. This card number two, I scored that green piece with my scoreboard since I didn't have an embossing folder handy. Now this is card three. I added three different color butterflies to help fill in that big white space, and I popped the one in the middle up with some foam tape. Um, this is number four. I just love these floral patterns and the pink and blue together. This is number five. I glued everything flat onto the card for this one and I did add some white peel off stickers along the seams for this card and for card number six which is basically the same and then here's card seven one of the fun folds and then for card eight I used another sheet of pattern paper the one with the tiny pink butterflies in place of the white rectangle piece and then this is card number nine I alternated the different floral strips with the tiny blue butterflies, kept it pretty simple. Here's card 10, and instead of adding the quarter circle as shown on the sketch, I just added a butterfly. Here's 11, and I popped up that butterfly with some foam tape. Here's card 12, really simple, layered scallop and circle with the sentiment. Here's card 13, again, the other fun fold. And then... Here's card 14, and I used the layered scallops A2 rectangle dies again for this one, and I really love how it turned out. And then here's card 15, and on this one I added a few extra strips using the white peel-off stickers, and I angled the butterfly the same angle as the strips. Now, um, because I had those extra scraps, I had to make more cards. I couldn't just leave them in my bag. So here are five additional cards that I made using the scraps. So that is a total of 30 cards made with the February of 2024 Crafty Courtyard Kit. I really hope that you like my cards and that it inspires you to get creative. Let me know which card or cards are your favorite down in the comments below. 
If you'd like to subscribe to the monthly kits on Pink and Main's website, I'd love it if you would use my affiliate link in the description box below. Remember, this is the last month to subscribe to get the 15% discount off of other products in the store as long as you're a subscriber. Now, starting next month, the discount changes to 10%. So if you've been contemplating on subscribing, you'll want to sign up now. Also, if you're new to my card challenges, I'll have a link down in the description box to the introduction video that explains all about it and how you can download the printable. And also, you can have a chance to win lots of prizes for creating cards and sharing them on social media, including prizes from Pink and Main. They are one of the Kendra's card challenges super sponsors. I would love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.